Hey guys, I promised that I would make a second video so that I could show you how to answer the other couple of questions on the Country Analyst Resources assignment, which is the one about finding a current event that will tell you about the resource change, uh, a, an example of a resource change for your research country, and then um, drawing a production possibilities diagram for that. So to find the current events, I don't really need the World Factbook anymore. I'm going to close that. Um, I don't really need the Index of Economic Freedom so I'm going to close that. But um, I did say, well, somehow one of my other things got closed here as well, but um, what I did say is that you could find current events by doing a new search, um, which I did, and that worked okay, but it actually was more labor to do a general Google news search than to go to one of the um, recommended sites that I had on the handout that I gave you in class last week. So for example, if I go to The Economist magazine, which is economist.com, the um, link to it is on the resource handout that I gave you in class last week, and if I just type in Haiti in the search box, then I will get articles about um, Haiti's economy, and I can scan the titles um, initially to see if I find something that looks promising. Remember, if I'm looking for something that is an example of a change in a resource, some headline that's going to tell me about labor changing in the country, or land natural resources changing in the country, or capital machinery and equipment changing in the country, or something that would make entrepreneurs more or less interested in operating there. Um, that's what I'm looking for. So if I scan through these, um, Haiti Economist World News, that's kind of generic. I mean, there might be something on that page, but I'm going to see if I can find something more specific first. Protests in Haiti, maybe if it's really severe and causing other kinds of changes. Um, the Haiti earthquake um, is always, well, I don't say always, but it still is having an effect on their economy, so I could go with that. Um, but I went with, if I scroll down a little bit, just two more articles down, I went with this cholera in Haiti because it's talking about the fact that this disease is now more widespread uh, in the country since the earthquake a few years ago. So I can go take a look at the cholera in Haiti. It's spinning. Um, and I find, all right, there it is. Um, I find the article about cholera in Haiti. Now, if I decide this is the article that I want to use, and I certainly could use this. I'm talking about disease in the country. It's affecting labor. With the decrease in labor comes a shrinking production possibilities curve. So this is a good example. Remember that I will have to uh, put this in my bibliography. So before I forget about it, I want to go ahead and copy that URL. Go to EasyBib. Remember, EasyBib.com to create my citations so that I know I have it. Uh, see, now the URL is pasted in here. I can click the Cite This button. OK, and you notice when it pops up that it kind of confirms what um, information they did know and what they didn't know. If it if they have we found and everything is filled in, then your citation is complete. If they say we didn't find, then if you have any of this information, it's good to put it in. So, for example, um, authors electronic when it was published and what the article title was. That's all information that I can type in there, and I certainly don't have to worry about doing a whole lot of work. I just need to go back quick and check the article. So let me go continue, and the article. Title was Cholera in Haiti, UN Strain. Um, authors, not sure if they had an author listed, so I can go back and double check. No, so I could just, if I want to put anything in, I could put Economist Magazine. So uh, let's see. And I don't have to. Again, I'm not teaching writing, so I'm not really strict on how this goes in. I just wanted this to go in alphabetically in my list, so it'll come up as Economist, comma, magazine. Um, date it was electronically published. Oops, let me grab that. Was July 15th, 2013, so it's only about six months old, so fits my current event criteria. 15th. July. 2013. Um, and a lot of these you won't even have to fill in any extra information. You'll just, the citation will pretty much be complete. So here's my citation, and I can grab that.
copy it and put it in my uh, document that I had. So I actually went through all of the sites that I recommended to you and I looked for um, an article on Haiti from The Economist, from NPR, from The Monitor. So I found several different sources. If I bring my document that I was working on in here, which has all my information, um, I'm actually going to skip down to the bottom for just a minute because as I was working, I just kept dumping my citations in. I'd put them in EasyBib and dump them into my document so that I have everything when I was done. So I have CIA Factbook, which I used earlier. Heritage Foundation is the Economic Freedom Index, so that's in here. Um, National Geographic is where I got that Haiti Dominican Republic image. It is important to cite images as well as articles. If you take somebody else's image and slap it on your page, you might as well have stolen it. So make sure that you attribute and give citation for images as well as articles. Um, and then I had uh, three different articles here that I could use to talk about a resource change in Haiti. I found one about um, $18 million to help Haitians who are in the camps um, that still exist four years after the earthquake. I could talk about how Canada is increasing flights to Haiti because even though Canada is spending the money, that does mean more transportation and infrastructure into Haiti. So other countries can make an investment that affects your research country. Um, the cholera in Haiti here. Um, and then I found also a couple more from NPR, four years after the earthquake. So I won't be using all of these. I just wanted to show you that with very little effort, I was able to find an article about a resource change in my country from every one of the sources that I gave you. Um, and I ended up using the goofy one here. I found one about the Harry Potter fans who are raising money. There's actually a group out there called the Harry Potter Alliance that tries to do good in the world. So they actually raised money and sent medical supplies to Haiti. So that's the one that I picked as my example. So if that's my article about this group that raised money to send medical supplies, I can go answer my question now. Um, question number two, report on a key resource e, uh, change, current or recent, that affects your country's production possibilities. So current event, I could have picked any of those articles that I had. Um, but I said, okay, I picked the goofiest article for this one. In the article, Eight Things Harry Potter Fans Are Doing to Fight Real Life Dark Forces, Rabler reports on the activities of philanthropic I can't even say it, philanthropic work that the Harry Potter Alliance has done worldwide, including a fundraising effort for Haiti. The HPA raised funds to send five airplanes full of medical supplies to Haiti in the wake of the 2010 earthquake. Without the supplies, even more lives would have been lost to injury and disease. HPA efforts couldn't make up for all of the losses sustained, but the provision of medical supplies would certainly soften the blow to the labor force. Um, Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't know. I must have been thinking something else. Anyway, labor force mitigating the damage somewhat. Uh, so then question three says include a production possibilities curve diagram. So I've answered question two. I gave a quick summary of what's in the article and what I think is going to happen. Question three says to include a production possibilities curve diagram. Let me shift this over just a little. Uh, please use agriculture and manufacturing as the two types of output. As soon as you start changing, there's a danger of changing it to something that is inaccurate and you lose the points on here. Lots of times I have people start putting wages and labor on the axes. That's not output. Or interest rates and spending, and that's not output. Please stick with these two categories. If you think it would be more appropriate to have two other categories of output, please check with me first before you do that. So just run your diagram by me. Uh, anyway, I am going to show you a diagram in a minute, but here's my explanation of the diagram. In the diagram, you can see the potential effect of the earthquake without medical supplies, a movement from production possibilities curve 1 to production possibilities curve 2. The loss of life would negatively affect both manufacturing and agriculture, blah, blah, blah. With the med And I did say, I basically said here's why I shifted it evenly, um, because with fewer workers it would affect both manufacturing and agriculture. With the medical supplies, though, the potential to produce still decreases, but not as severely as it would have. Now, my graph is a little more complicated because I'm talking about where they were before the earthquake, where they would have been without this stuff, and where they are with this stuff. So I actually have three production possibilities curve in my diagram. You will most likely you'll only have two. Um, I don't expect people to have this multi-shift thing that I'm doing. Um, now, what if I don't have the knowledge, how do I actually get a graph into Weebly? What am I going to do? I don't have a computer program that makes graphs. 
if you know how to generate a graph on your computer, that's great. It'll look cleaner. If you don't, I am okay with you drawing a picture of the graph as long as it is done really well. Everything's labeled, everything's clear. I don't have to really squint and see what's going on. Then you can take a picture of it, like take an image on your cell phone or with your camera and just put the image into Weebly. It's really easy to add an image in Weebly. So um, don't worry about it. If you don't know how to do anything with technology to make a graph, you can draw one. Now this graph I drew and took a picture of and it's not fabulous because there's all this white space around it. It's hard to read. It's got shadows on it. Um, I wouldn't be crazy about this. Uh, but I cropped it and made it a little bigger, which improved it a little bit. You would not lose content points for this. You could get full content points for this. You're not going to get any style points. And later in the semester, I would expect you to put something a little cleaner in. But I would take this and you wouldn't lose content points. So here's my graph. Production possibilities curve one was before the earthquake. Production possibilities curve two, the red one, is after the earthquake without any medical supplies. They would have much greater loss of life because of, um, not just because of the physical deaths from the earthquake, but because of all the disease that follows. With the medical supplies, I actually only um, shift inward as far as production possibilities curve three. So I am going to lose production, but not as much as I would have without those supplies. So after the earthquake, if there are medical supplies, that will help us save lives and we won't have as bad of a negative impact as we would have otherwise. So I've now answered Question two, with a little bit of a summary, I have my graph and an explanation of why I drew my graph that way. The only other thing that I need to do to finish the assignment is to make sure that I have my um, bibliography. And because I was consistently, every time I used a new source, just dumping it into EasyBib, making my uh, citation and putting it in here, I have all of my citations ready. So now I have all the content that I need and I can just copy paste stuff from here into my Weebly website, which I will show you how to do that in the last video. For those of you who are a little nervous about using Weebly and building the website, I will do one more video to show you how to get all your content in there.